Welcome back everybody to our studies in co-ownership. This lesson is now going to start to talk about the ways in which co-ownership relates legal and equitable principles and the process by which this is actually this is actually established in in land law. So this lesson is going to be a little bit longer than the lessons that I've been doing previously. Um, simply put, what we've been doing is taking an introduction to co-ownership, talking about the distinction on the one hand between the joint tenancy and then on the other hand the tenancy in common. Uh, this lesson is going to talk about how these things relate within the area of equity and the concept of equity in land law. So this is essentially designed to introduce the equity dimensions of co-ownership. These are paramount importance for the concept of co-ownership since it is a concept. The idea of co-ownership is a concept which exists in both law as well as in equity. Now. I, I've mentioned previously that, that some chapters in textbooks or, or, or some university lectures actually um, combine co-ownership and trusts of land together as, as one basic uh, big topic. Uh, we haven't done that in, that in these lessons, given the fact that we've done trusts of land first, um, but it makes sense to suggest that this is actually a way of doing so, given just how important the concept of the trust and the concept of the beneficial legal title um, uh, that exists and, and the, the relationship with inequity that, that, that is created between, um, uh, between co-owners uh, in this particular regard. So it makes sense to suggest that this is a, a, a question that is of trusts of land. And with that in mind, with that in mind, I want to talk about the legislation that is actually quite paramount in, in relating to and regulating the concept of co-ownership. This is the Trusts of Land and Appointments of Trustees Act from 1996, often abbreviated to TALATA. It made a number of changes to the notion of co-ownership ever since the 1925 acts that uh, pertained to, uh, to, to, to law of our land. Um, you notice that there's a lot of, of pieces of legislation that were passed in 1925. 1925 was really, in terms of legislative changes, the year for the land law, the year where lots of different um, changes to property and property law and the relationship between land and, and, and legal principles actually takes place. The main change in regards to co-ownership that came as a result of the Trusts of Land and Appointment of Trustees Act is the change from trusts uh, being um, trusts for sale in relation to co-ownership. Um, this is what was originally existing uh, under the Law of Property Act to trusts of land with the imposition of Talata. Now, when we talk about legal and equitable interests and we do so in relation to co-ownership, this is an area of law that concerns itself with trusts of land, as, as I've mentioned. There therefore means that there will be both legal and equitable interests when it comes to the co-ownership of land. When we are talking about legal co-ownership, it is those who have legal title to the property who actually represent what are known as trustees in co-ownership relationships. So according to the 1925 Trustee Act, um, Section 34, this limits the number of trustees who are able to have joint legal title to the property, i.e. a joint tenancy in the property. And this is what we see here. Um, Section 34 is titled limitation of the number of trustees and it says where at the commencement of this act there are more than four trustees of a settlement of land or more than four trustees holding on trust sorry holding on trust sorry holding land on trust for sale remember the legislation changes as a result of Tilata, um no new trustees shall, except where as a result of the appointment of a number is reduced to four or less, be capable of being appointed until the number is reduced to less than four, and thereafter the number shall not be increased beyond four. Simply put, when we are talking about legal title to property, legal co-ownership of land, there can only be four trustees. There can only be four legal titles, uh, people who have legal title to the property. So this means, as a result of which, 
those who hold title, those who hold legal title, can only ever hold the legal title as part of a joint tenancy. This is what is cited in section 34 of the Trustee Act of 1925. So what this is telling us, essentially, um, in, in not so many words, or in, in more words than probably need to be explained, should I say, um, is that a joint tenancy is limited to four people. You can only have a joint tenancy of four individuals, given the fact that you can only have four legal owners and have four legal trustees, as per Section 34 of the Trustees Act. And so, and also, in addition to that, you can only ever have legal title as part of a joint tenancy, which is also stated in the same legislation. Therefore, a joint tenancy is limited to four. In contrast, then, when we think about equitable title, those can have a beneficial interest in the property. That's where the equitable title arises. There is no maximum number of individuals who are able to have equitable title as part of a co-ownership of the property. Um, unlike legal title two, there is no limit upon which type of co-ownership equitable title can be. So essentially what I'm trying to say is you have two types of co-ownership. You have the joint tenancy and the tenancy in common. The joint tenancy can only ever be legal. It can only ever be legal. And so therefore, there is only ever allowed four people to be part of a joint tenancy. When we talk about the tenancy in common, there can be either legal tenancies in common, at which point there can only ever be four, but then there are also equitable rights for a tenancy in common, to which case there can be no um, limit to the number of um, tenancies that or joint tenants that can exist or, or tenancies in common that can exist. So either through a joint tenancy or a tenancy in common, can we see the co-ownership of land um, in relation to equitable, um, uh, equitable um, co-ownership, equitable title? And so the result of this means um, that when we think about this, when we think about joint tenancy and, uh, and, and the tenancy in common, um, where there is a joint tenancy, okay, there is legal title to the property and there can only be five, um, uh, five uh, people who are part of that, uh, sorry, four people who are part of that. When we talk about the tenancy in common, or at least the equitable title, we can uh, have a, an in, a, a theoretically an, in limit, an unlimited number of tenants that are part of this co-ownership relationship.